welcome to Showcase TRT World's Daily Arts and Culture Programme coming to you this week from the 53rd International Antalya Film Festival. We'll be here all week keeping up with what's going on for you. Make sure you get comfortable and let's begin. Turkish artist Nil Yalter is interested in bringing to light omitted facts, forgotten people and repressed emotions. She takes a hard look at our society in her exhibition, Off the Record in Istanbul. Most of the work by artist Neil Yolta focuses on the struggles of often overlooked members of society, like labourers, women and immigrants. Her exhibition, now in Istanbul, called Off the Record, is about these people who are denied a place in official histories. Her installations combine painting, photography, writing, collage, performance and video. Her piece called Exile is a Hard Job takes the form of a carpet made of Turkish poetry. The verse is about the poor state of industrial workers in the middle of the 20th century. And Temporary Dwellings documents where immigrants live in Paris. It consists of Polaroid photographs of houses and apartment blocks throwaway objects and hand-drawn illustrations like this unplastered concrete wall drawing. She goes to immigrants, talk to them, documents their uh, living places um, and this huge series that was that is realized uh, from 1976 to 2005 she has different uh, video recordings, video interviews with immigrants and she also visits their living places in the peripheries of Paris like in her works temporary dwellings. Another interesting part of the exhibition looks at an ex-convict named Mimi. Yolta and two other artists recorded Mimi's experience in prison through drawings. They also recreated many of Mimi's experiences in photographs and an album. When we hear or read about Mimi's story uh, in this piece, the artists uh, also um, perform parts of the story. So you see uh, habits of the prisoners where they try to integrate themselves to real life. So they maybe they rip off a piece of paper from a magazine with an image of a salad bowl, which they never eat, and they start chewing on the piece. And it's sort of maybe their way of simulating uh, life outside. So you see these inventive moments where they feel alive, and these moments are brought back, uh, are brought, performed by the artists themselves, and I think this is how sort of viewers are forced to uh, associate with life in prison. But Yolta's artwork doesn't just focus on problems in society. She also has works like Orient Express, in which she recorded her trip in 1976 from Paris to Istanbul. And Pixelismus, which looks at mosaics. But this Turkish artist who was born in Cairo and lives in Paris still likes to put outsiders centre stage in a lot of her work. You can see it at the Artat Art Space until January the 15th. The International Antalya Film Festival is in full swing. 
Aside from recognizing the best movies with awards, the festival aims to promote films across national and international commercial platforms. Miranda Atty finds out how. 50,000 visitors will have the opportunity to watch 134 films from 39 countries during this week's International Antalya Film Festival. But it's about more than just showcasing films. We have to help the industry improve itself locally and globally. This year we started Film Tomorrow, which is film talent and marketing rounds we call. Uh, film Tomorrow will help the films to, to make their promotions to the industry all around the world and to TV buyers, distributors, to festival programmers and those kind of people. So I think that it will help the, the economics of film industry in Turkey. While Film TMR deals with completed films, the Antalya Film Forum aims to boost Turkish co-productions and help directors find financing. We are making uh, pitching platforms and uh, work in progress platforms and try to discover uh, new projects, new good projects, not only young producers or directors. And this year is going to be the third year of the forum, yes. which is, is really exciting. Do we have any major success stories from previous years? Of course, we have a lot of, we are very young, but we have a lot of uh, success stories. In first year, uh, two films uh, they did their um, uh, world premiere in the very famous festivals. For example, Ivy was in Sundance. They discovered here and also uh, Winds of Memories and the Blue Bicycle, Rauf and the Young Wrestlers. They did their uh, world premiere in Berlinale. Also in first year we have some projects in uh, pitching platform. They found a co-producer and they are now they are in shooting. This year the festival added two special sections to the program. This festival is not only a national and international competition, but also contains some projects that are concerned with social issues. The world is going through this refugee crisis, and also this year there is the 15th July coup attempt. We have to keep both of these in our minds, so we devoted two sections of the festival to showing films related to these issues. For Mayor Turel, the long-term goal is to turn Antalya into a cinema town. And if he succeeds, the festival's 2016 tagline, the light of the cinema shines from Antalya, will be true all year round. Miranda Atti, TRT World, Antalya. Next on Showcase, we talk about a standout film showing at the Antalya Film Festival. It talks about one of Turkey's most important issues through the emotional story of a family. It's called My Father's Wings, and we have the director, Kuvant Sezai, with us to talk about it. Hello and welcome to the show. Hello, thank you very much. You have quite an interesting life path from engineering to filmmaking. What drew you to filmmaking? Uh, I studied engineering, bioengineering in Turkey. But then uh, in the uni my university days, uh, I was uh, dealing with um, th uh, cinema and theater. Uh, and I, w I made a lot of uh, short films uh, to discover the cinema. Uh, and then uh, I went to Italy uh, and I, there I changed my life and started to study editing on, on cinema. And then, um, and then I went come back to, to Turkey and worked in, in the uh, sector. Uh, and I always wanted to do, uh, do my films. And um, it's, I don't know, uh, something that's hard to explain what was the real reason, but uh, it's what I, what I wanted to do in life. Mm -hmm. It drew you in, finally. Yeah. Um, you, in your film, you talk about an important that's at the forefront of news and our conversations in Turkey, and that's fatal accidents that happen. What drew you to this subject? It was 2010, and I, I read an uh, article in the newspaper. It was about a university student uh, who uh, died in, in a construction site in Istanbul 
uh, and then uh, I read, read about his, his story and it, it took two years. Uh, I have always something in my mind and uh, what can I do about this thing and and in the meantime I studied I uh, made an, uh, some uh, research on this topic uh, and I got to know that uh, Turkey is third in, in the world and first in Europe in, in fatal work, work accidents so it, it shows me that there is um, a systemic problem uh, on this issue and I wanted to tell uh, the, the human human stories on this this malfunctioning system let's say mm -hmm. Well, human stories, you say, and the film does get quite emotional to watch sometimes. Mm. Uh, during film, filming, did you get emotional? Were there any difficult moments to film? Uh, in fact, no, uh, but during the writing, uh, I, I ah, was the yeah, in, the, in, the, in the writing process. It took uh, three years uh, and sometimes, yeah, it was emotionally hard for me. But in the, uh, during the shootings, um, it, I, was all, I was concentrated, trying to be concentrated on the... Uh, on the mise en scene, on on the scene itself, and trying to be safe uh, in a construction site, so uh, and making it as good as possible, uh, and having good um, performance for my actors, and I tried to concentrate on on these things. Mm -hmm. I can say it. It does tell a local story, but you did get international recognition with your film. Mm -hmm. Did you expect that? Uh, let's say uh, yes. Uh, you have always, as a filmmaker, you have uh, some expectations for your film. But when you do it, uh, afterwards, there is, there's a saying that for a poem, um, um, uh, for a poet, uh, uh, he, he can know what uh, he wants to write, but he, he doesn't know what he writes. Uh, mm -hmm. And so for me, uh, I have always questions and doubts, and if, if it works, and if the story is, uh, is going on the direction I wanted, etc. But when we premiered in, in Carlo Vivari Film Festival main competition, uh, it was a good sign that um, that the film um, crossing the boundaries of, of our country uh, it, it, it reached to, to the heart of the uh, European uh, European people and and this festival uh, so uh, it was good for us to, to premiere there and we had good some some good critics on the on the film and so then we, we came to Adana Film Festival and we got a um, seventh prize out of, uh, out mm -hmm. of 18. And uh, it was also a uh, very good uh, sign that, that the people, uh, let's say, uh, the festival and festival audience and, and the jury also liked the, uh, the film and interested in, in this issue because this issue is, I think, worth to tell. Uh, it happens every day and at least three, three workers are dying a day. Um, it's really a, a, a bleeding wound uh, for me. So it was important to to mention this while making a, a good film, good uh, film out of it. So right. so I wanted to 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 manage both uh, together and um, and yes, we had good signs and now we're in Antalya uh, and it's also a, a big pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. Kamaj Cesar, thank you very much for joining us on Showcase. Thank you. The Syrian war has created many tragic stories, but there are happy ones too. A refugee in Germany has become a YouTube sensation and released a book. Hallo Leute und herzlich willkommen, herzlich willkommen in mein erstes Videos für euch. Mein Name ist Firas Al Shatil. Ich wohne hier in Berlin seit zweieinhalb Jahren und ich komme aus Syrien. This is how Firas Al Shatil introduced himself to the world and how he set himself on his path to becoming the most famous refugee in Germany. He rose to fame with his YouTube videos on refugee life, integration and racism. Now people will get to learn about his life in detail. The actor, comedian and filmmaker just published his book I'm Coming to Germany. The book, written in German, follows Al Shatter from his life as a student and filmmaker in Damascus, through his imprisonment and torture by the Syrian government, to his new life in Germany. What I try to do is give a good picture, so all refugees can have a chance like me. But I don't know if all refugees can be like me. I don't want to be a leader. I don't want to be a president of refugees or a minister for refugees. I just want to be myself. What made him become a viral sensation was a video he posted early this year. In it, he asks random people to hug him as a sign of trust. 
Since then, he has made dozens of videos. But for the integration problem, he seeks only one solution – time. The refugees just came last year. These one million people came just last year. And everyone talks about integration. If they left their own country to go to another culture, to China for example, they could not integrate themselves in one year. They could not learn the language, they could not find a home and they could not find work. It's not that easy. We just have to give people time. Although things have worked out for him as a refugee, al Shatter says he had no other choice than to become one. There is a war in my country, so I have to leave my country or I have to fight. I don't want to fight. I don't want to kill anybody. So I have to leave my country and go to a place where I feel at home. So this is why I'm a refugee. But this was not my dream when I was a kid. None of my friends or the Syrian people ever had a dream of becoming a refugee. Some Germans welcome Al Shatter's book on humor but others doubt it will go far in solving refugee and integration issues. Most people probably wouldn't have the confidence or the possibilities to do what he does, but he made these YouTube videos and I like them. And now I hope some people will read the book. Politically, it might bring more attention to the issues, but I don't think he can provide a solution. It's a bit too trivial, if I'm allowed to say that. But Al Shatter has made people laugh. He's made them put themselves in someone else's shoes. And he has provided some hope to other refugees living in Germany. Mitter Gumurhan is an international film producer. He made his directorial debut with a film called Young Wrestlers. We have him with us now to talk about the film that premiered at the Berlinale Film Festival and is currently showing here at the Antalya Film Festival. Hello and thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Your film documents daily life at the Amasya Wrestling Center. How did you discover this school? Actually, it's a very long story, so I'll try to uh, shorten it. Uh, actually, I wanted to uh, make a documentary about two brothers mm -hmm. who actually won uh, this prestigious uh, boarding school and um, when we arrived in the city I saw a grey mountain area and then this pink building with men testosterone I thought okay this is so much uh, there's so much test, uh, contrast with the pink and the man manly testosterone I could find here a story so that's why I decided uh, to shoot there. I mean when you saw the school what moved you so much that you wanted to make a documentary and it became your first uh, directing effort? I got a support from the Minister of Culture of course uh, mm -hmm. because of the uh, documentary funding so um, in the original story in my director statement there was something I wanted to tell about a new family setup when um, when you arrive somewhere how do you find a new family setup but when I arrived at uh, a boarding school there were 26 children and everybody came from different uh, regions and then and there were children between the ages of 10 to 18 so I wanted to see how this dynamic could uh, work so that's where I was the most um, yeah, motivated by to do it. Mm -hmm. Did you feel some sort of responsibility to introduce this uh, cult the sport and the culture that comes with it to a wider audience or were you just moved by the kids' stories? Actually, why I wanted to tell something from the children's point of view because everybody knows all already the uh, oil wrestling but from the adult point of view and uh, that's worldwide known but those adults need to come from somewhere so I thought, okay, where do I start? And it was the most easy uh, decision to tell from the children. So when I found the boarding school, uh, I started shooting, uh, following all these 26 children. But at, uh, at the end, I needed to decide uh, which ones I needed to cut off uh, during the shooting period. So yeah, um, about uh, responsibility. It's actually not a, doc a sport documentary, it's more about the daily life of the children, their struggles, uh, their, uh, champ yeah, I would say their champions, and their, uh, their sorrows, their, uh, yeah, as a, sli a slice of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, 26 children and you're shooting a documentary. Uh, any memories from the shoot? Um, 
only memories, <laughs> <laughs> only memories, uh, because eventually you are there shooting, you're constantly with them. Uh, somehow you connect with a few of them and you connect uh, in a certain way, thinking about your own youth and mm -hmm. some, now uh, at a certain age you connect with others. Uh, so it, it was a, from the beginning till the end, it's only memories that we only can memories. share. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the first time you've actually um, been the director. Uh, what are you working on these days and do you have plans to continue directing? Yes, definitely. Definitely? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I just got the support from the Ministry of Culture uh, for a script. It's called Monkey Boy. Oh. And also got from the Dutch Film Fund uh, support for the script development. And I'm also pitching it here at the uh, Antalya Film Forum, this project tomorrow. And I just got recently support for a new documentary, also a youth documentary. Uh, so yeah, there are a lot of youth films in the future. Mete mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you for joining You're us on welcome. Showcase. Thank you for having me. One of the world's top cultural prizes, the Premium Imperiali, was awarded to artists from the US, Latvia, Brazil and France, including director Martin Scorsese. One of the world's greatest filmmakers was honoured in Japan as he is making a film set there. Martin Scorsese was one of five artists to receive Japan's highest cultural honour, the Premium Imperiali. Scorsese is now making the movie Silence, about two Christian missionaries who travelled to Japan in the 16th century. Once I'm drawn to a subject, um, I find I have to be comfortable with that subject, and I have to spend the time there, and I have to spend the energy, and I have to enjoy that, meaning that I really want to do it. The director of Raging Bull and Taxi Driver received his medal in Tokyo from Prince Hitachi, brother of Emperor Akihito. Another winner of the Global Arts Prize was American Cindy Sherman. She won in the painting category, although she works primarily as a photographer. She's known for often making herself the subject of her photos. French artist Annette Messager won the prize for sculpture. She creates her work with everyday items like magazines, knitting and cushions. Brazilian architect Paulo Manges da Rocha was recognised for maximising space in the buildings he designs and highlighting the appeal of simple materials like concrete and steel. Latvian violinist Gidon Kremer won the music prize. He's the founder of the Kremerata Baltica, a chamber music orchestra for young musicians from the Baltics. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe sent a video message to the winners. The prizes are awarded each year. They were established to recognize the best from the arts world, like the Nobel Prizes do for the sciences. Each winner also receives $140,000. That's all we have time for on this edition of Showcase, coming to you from the 53rd International Antalya Film Festival. We'll be back soon with more from the world of arts and culture, but before we go, we'll leave you with a trailer for Into the Inferno. I'm Ozlem Shitan. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. The sun dimmeth, the land sinketh, gusheth forth steam and cutting fire. To the heaven soared the hurtling flames of the mighty gods, the engulfing doom. It is hard to take your eyes off the fire that burns deep under our feet. This was a monstrous volcanic eruption, one of the largest in all of Earth history. Obviously, there was a scientific side to our journey, but what we were really chasing was a magical side, no matter how strange things might eventually get. a fire that wants to burst forth, and it could not care less about what we are doing up here. This volcano will destroy this world.